Hey guys, I'm Captain Foley, and this I'm... is Trek Yards. Welcome back, everybody. I'm going to go. Sorry, I was preempting you there. Hi, Stuart. That's all right. And Michael Westmore are here. Hi, Michael. We have the amazing Michael Westmore joining us again today to talk about more Star Trek aliens. And it's always a pleasure to have him here, so thank you very much, Michael, for joining us again today. But, but why so, is he amazing, Stuart? Why, why is this guy amazing? Because he is, but why? He's done all the, all the alien species for Star Trek since TNG, so I, I consider that pretty amazing. He's, he's like a god. He's created characters well. in the universe. <laughs> legend, legend is good enough. <laughs> legend is, okay. Fair and enough. And humble Fair as enough. well. Humble. But, but I, I want to take us back to 1995. That's when it's released. So maybe 1994. To Voyager. The new spin-off, the, the furthest in the timeline, starting off, you know, ship is lost in the Delta Quadrant, and we're introducing brave new villains, you know, the next, the next Klingons, the next Romulans, the, the next, next big baddies, people. Yeah. We are talking about the Kazon today. We're excited, Kazon. aren't we? The Kazon. So crazy. take us back to Voyager. New show, new franchise, in a sense. What was in the script? What was your thoughts? And what, what... Tell us the story, Michael. Uh, the script said we're going to land on a planet with these people called Kazons. <laughs> so, and that's all I would get. I literally, I, and I had the writers at least given me a direction of what we're doing. It would be, it would have been nice, but it wasn't. They, they kind of left it open. So after reading the script and reading the personality of the people, you would figure out, are they good guys? Are they bad guys? Are they neutral people? What, what, so, I mean, I'm, they do use that to, to in in the makeup uh, with the expressions that you want to give them. Uh, Kazons were going to be bad guys. Um, the planet was going to be a little warm, and they were going to we ran into the Okampa, and, which were nice people. Um, with the Kazons, uh, it was just funny. For something in reading the script, it reminded me of a turkey. And if you look at the Kazon makeup, <laughs> as far as their throat goes, it's like mm. the gobbler on a turkey. Uh, they had a little nose piece that had two little protrusions in it that kind mm. of, it wasn't a beak, but it kind of came down into that. And their foreheads, I think of their foreheads are, um, again, it was uh, where it, where it came from, I don't, I don't remember, but uh, it was just an interesting species to put together. And then the hairstyle, the mm, hairstyle, Josie they... Norman, whose father was a wig maker or a hat maker in <laughs> Europe, fantastic hairstylist. Uh, but these wigs, she actually has these big chunks that are in these wigs are sponges. They're natural sponges that she weaved into their hair. Wow! Again, it was uh, it, it was a crazy type of thing that just caught on with their the coloring of their faces and uh, just the nasty people they were supposed to be. Um, they it's, they look similar to Klingons. They look almost like Klingons having a bad hair day. Yeah! 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 <laughs> Uh, we kind of went with an orangey color as opposed yeah. to a brownie color mm. on them, a sunburn color because they were mm. supposedly outside in the hot mm. climate and everything. Mm. Um, but they they became, I, I would say, almost like um, not a, not a joke, but a, is, is humorous. They, yeah. they didn't play it humorous, but as far as us behind the scenes were going, you know, kind of chuckling at how, how they performed in this bizarre makeup. Yeah, they weren't great. <laughs> Good summary. Good summary. Thank you. I, mean, yeah. I remember when Voyager was kind of like my trek. That's what I grew up with, and then obviously Enterprise came out. Um, Kazon were always kind of a strange one because they didn't leave any real impact on, on the show, especially since you know, Voyager's dr moving out of space. They're only going to be a finite race anyway. And so, you know, their first appearance is very, you know, it doesn't tell you much about them besides their aggressiveness because they're on, they're on not their planet, trying to do get water even though water is really easy to get. They're, they're clearly dumb because they can just go to the asteroid nearby and get water. I mean, they're clearly not very intelligent anyway. Then it's revealed they were they were slaves and and all these different sects and things. It's kind of like a 
they didn't have a clear direction. But to start off with such a makeup that I mean, so it was it was your guys that did the hair then, or was it you specifically, Michael? Because I think you, I think you just said that it wasn't you that did the hair. No, Josie, Josie, yeah. Josie did. Would would you yeah. have gone with that hair? What would you have done if you were given that choice? What would you have counterbalanced the makeup? I with? know, because... you know, she wanted to do something different other than Klingons, as opposed to putting a wig on with long hair, short hair, whatever. So that's why she built this. Certainly is different. Round of hair, inlaid with sponges. So. <laughs> well, what it, it, it it gives an interesting silhouette. Absolutely, yeah. like it does. Yeah. It does look good if it's just backlit. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it just looks dirty. <laughs> Um, it looks good though. Yeah, it was. It was like the first. It was the first shot into, into Voyager, you know, where we were still kind of like, okay, what direction are we going? Mm -hmm. um, I would say if the character was brought back, I don't know if I'd change much on my makeup at all. Maybe put a couple little horns on his, his forehead or something, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I, I'm sure the wig style would have, you know, would have changed a bit uh, to where it it almost seemed like it was two separate things going for you. This was a hairstyle that belonged somewhere, and this was something that belonged mm -hmm. somewhere. So um, I agree, the two of them, you know, didn't meld perfectly to begin with. But once it's all built, you know, and they last for X amount of episodes before we moved on to another another race. It, yeah. It, did make them memorable though. To be fair, they are that odd first race. No, as you're saying, and even talking about them, there's not a lot of memories about them. Um, well, just the look, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, the, I mean, my my one of my favorite races on the, that show was that series was the 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 people that had flesh eating disease and they continually. Yep. Vidians. Uh, the Deans, yeah. Deans, Straight yeah. off on my head. Aren't you guys proud? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then I guess um, we'll, uh, we knew this would be a slightly shorter one because, you know, they weren't in it very much. But we'll ask the question now. So how long did that makeup take to do? And and the, I assume just yeah. the... Do they have to have a bald cap with the hair on the wig? Or was it just sort of like... No, stuck they... Uh, no, they... Uh, with, with, with the the head... We, we put the makeup on uh, the, the face and it... It probably took about two hours to get it all glued down and painted. And Josie would have the wigs all pre-styled. They put a wig cap, which is a very thin little cloth cap, pull it on the head, pin it in, so then they, they can pin the wig to it. And then they would just take them. But they would be all set. You know, sponges would be preset. And um, the, the hair was all kind of fluffed. So then once they got them all glued on, it was just a matter of taking and doing a little finger waving on them now a, f a few of the pictures that i'm looking at here some of them have uh, facial hair as well now is that mm -hmm. the actor's facial hair or is that no put on? no we, we we put on that okay and is this another one of those races that you designed each head or was it a bit more molded you had a you know very similar for each it one. was very similar this this was one yeah. where there was it was kind of like a cookie cutter where okay. the foreheads all that we had different sizes there was a mm. similarity to those to keep them all, unlike Klingons where we could do that, uh, a similarity in the makeup so you wouldn't think it was a different species that was going on. Mm. And even the nose pieces, we had those in large, medium, and small. So it, they all had this very similar look, look to them. So I'm also going through a, you know, just, just the Google images, and it, it is sort of vaguely Klingon, but more sort of wrinkly top it's, it's less about yeah. horns more about just piece and then you've got that very distinct middle bit which a lot of them have a colored piece some are yeah. red some are purple that i didn't even really oh that's right on. it had it had the little crown that went yeah. down the center of the piece you should show me a picture before we talk i forgot <laughs> and i didn't put them in my book so i i forgot i'd but when i see it yeah but as i said yeah. if you said did you ever make a makeup that looked like a turkey <laughs> he's on i, I should ask that straight away <laughs> Dare we ask though? I mean, obviously, episode of television. You know, we talked to Rick Sternbach, so he did you know a lot of designs on it and Voyager. Right. It is somewhat cranking it out. You know, there is there is very much like you know we've got six days, four days, three days, and now it's got to shoot. Did you reuse the Kazon makeup because it was stopped, you know, not used up on some point? Do you reuse it for any other aliens? Did you reuse any pieces 
for other aliens, or was it so much just, here's a head, okay, it's not really usable again? No, you know, the only place I would reuse it, and I, I possibly did, would be if we re landed on a planet that had, uh, you know, like Deep Space Nine, where there was a bunch of aliens and humanoids walking around, uh, it would not be painted the same. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, the little piece that went on the top of the forehead, yes, I did use that again, but I wouldn't have used it with a nose tip or with a, that type right. of a wig. That piece would have been used with a totally different designed makeup, and it wouldn't be a principal character. Yeah, most, you know, especially on Deep Space, um, mm -hmm. I had a lot of characters in the background that uh, were, were pieces left over from TNG and things, but you always did a Mr. Potato Head. Mix and match. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of. They were, they, well, they were called Westmore aliens. It would actually say it in the in their in our call sheet. It would say we need two Westmore aliens. So it yes. wasn't like do what you want. And for the most part, you guys did an amazing job. Although uh, ex Scientifica and some other sites, they pride themselves on being able to find an alien from TNG, you know, in yeah. DS9 that's in the wrong quadrant, or you know that sort of. It's just budget. It's just you had them laying around, yeah. but occasionally but you, you no, did you, reuse. Yeah, you wouldn't find you wouldn't find the character as uh, it's as it was originally. Mm -hmm. You're only gonna you're only gonna find pieces. You're only gonna find pieces. In fact, on Star on on Star Trek three or four, I think one of the movies, they didn't have time or the budget to come up with all the aliens they needed. So mm -hmm. they came to me. We went to the boxes. We pulled out pieces. The only rule was you got to paint it a different color. So there were a number of aliens walking around there that were TNG looking mm. like aliens, but you didn't recognize them because they had different hair, different color, and things. Very cool. And just going back to what you said a second ago about the Mr. Potato Head thing, that's what we need is a Star Trek Potato Head doll with a whole bunch of Star Trek pieces you can mix and match. I think that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, you know, we did come up. <laughs> I did come up with a female for for Morn from Deep Space Nine. Did never you? never used it. We actually sculpted it. We made it, and it wow. just in fact we made it up for fun, hoping that they would use it somewhere. And they Morn's never did. girlfriend or wife comes back. Morn's girlfriend. Me. Yeah, I mean, did well, he's had have... a few. Wow, wow. <laughs> his his life partner. I mean, did you have pictures of that we can look at at separate separate times? No. You know, I, I never. I don't know of any pictures. Oof. It was just we we painted it and we set it up on the wall and <laughs> you pointed designers that you point you know, writers they come in and say look look we have it write it yeah. put in the script yeah, it, we it, have it that <laughs> never seemed to work that never really seemed to work you, you either 20, if, if they had written it. it it will come <laughs> but if it came first it yeah. you know did, it didn't pay to go ahead. And yeah. play and do that when there's other mm -hmm. things to do because uh, it although Morn was there so long it would have been fun to have yeah, at least it maybe have her walk by or something have him do a hey, you know, sold double me. Yeah. Sold me. so as we always ask with these alien makeups for you what's your least favorite thing and your, your thing you like the best about the Kazon and you always have the thing you change would be the be the horns of her but yeah favorite least favorite yeah I. I, I, maybe the character in its entirety um, was it's not my least you know it, it's just it's it's another just shot of saying okay this is what we've got this is what we're yeah. going to shoot we don't we don't have time we don't have time or money because it was approved all the way along the line hmm. um, it's almost like they should have been a, a, a character of the week instead of a, a main race yeah, well, the thing race. is, and we never knew how long they were going to carry on with them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, you know, we do an episode, and then they might say, well, we're going to use them for a little while. Well, a little while, you know, yeah. if it's going to be six episodes or something like that, you might make some change or something. Now, as far as the makeup goes, I was I was okay. As far as foreheads, mm -hmm. nose tips go, and the uh, – because yeah, uh, for a minute I had forgotten this, this whole thing. As I said, and it was all – I had got a book out with a turkey in it and looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, thank you so much. But Michael, yeah, always a pleasure. We wanted this little, again, we need to be a shorter one, but we had to yeah. ask you because it, come on, it, it people want to know. I think people want to know. So thank you very much for joining us for a look at the Kazon.
Yes. My pleasure. Yeah, it's it's, it's fond memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking forward to having you back again soon to talk about some other aliens. So Thank you. you guys also, can look also, forward to that. Also, the uh, you know sci-fi uh, with Face Off is going to be doing its. Uh, we're into our twelfth season coming up this year. Awesome. I watch every season, so I, I love Face Off. So every time I see you now, I'm like, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Um, anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the episode. If you did, click that like button. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any more awesome Trek Yards goodness or Michael Westmore alien discussions. And, uh, yeah. And if you want to support the show directly, you can do two ways. Well, three ways, but Stuart will tell you the second one after the fact. Or a third one. Either Patreon or monthly donation scheme to support the show a little bit each and every month. Or one-time donation at trekyards.com. Just click the donate button and put in a big juicy number like a thousand, two thousand, ten bucks. I mean, whichever. You're poison. It's up to you. Yeah. My best to everybody. Yeah. And don't forget to share this video around, guys. So thank you, Michael, for joining us. And don't forget to pick up Michael's book, Makeup Man. Uh, it's got some fantastic stories in here and some great stuff. So, yeah, mm -hmm. you will. So until next time, I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Kongs. Michael Westmore. See you again. Bye, everybody. Bye.